In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make heavy bass synths in under 10 minutes that sound like this. Hey, this is Timmy G back with another Logic Pro X tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to make heavy basses using smart controls in the EFM1 synth. Smart controls is gonna allow us to automate multiple things at the same time, which makes it really easy for us to manipulate our sound to get some really cool basses. So I'm gonna open up an EFM1 synth right now. So here's the synth, and what we're gonna end up doing is just assigning a bunch of these parameters to our smart controls. The keyboard command for the smart controls is B. So if I hit B, I have my smart controls here. And I'm gonna keep this synth up. And by default, it assigns these, and I don't really want that, so what I'm gonna do is click right here in the parameter mapping and go to delete all pitch mappings. So now everything is unmapped. And you can map multiple things, but in this tutorial, we're just gonna have everything that we wanna adjust here onto one mapping. So in order to do that, I'm gonna hit learn. Here where it says unmapped, I'm gonna click right here, go to EFM1, and then go to carrier FM intensity. That's this thing right here. So notice when I move this, the FM changes here, and I'm gonna do musical typing, which is command K, and play a note, so. I'm gonna move this harmonic down. And when I move this, here how the sound changes, okay? Now, I don't want it to go all the way to zero, from zero to 100, so I'm actually gonna change this to maybe, let's say, 0 0.4, let's drag it up there, it's not letting me type. So if I go to 0 0.4, something like that, and watch what happens when I move this to the bottom. When this is at zero, this FM is about at 40%. And it won't let me go past that. Now, if I move it manually on here, it will. But then when I move this, it'll start right back at 0 0.4. Okay, now if you wanna get more in detail for that, which sometimes it's helpful, you can hit open right here and this will show the map. So when I move this knob right here, it shows that I'm at the bottom of my map, which is my input is zero, my output is 0 0.391. And when I move this up, see I have a linear relationship up to the max. If you wanted to, you can change the curve so you can have it go reversed, which I rarely use, sometimes it's useful, um, but you might wanna change the shape of the curve. You can make it an S curve. Uh, for here, I'm gonna just keep it like this, back to where we had, but you can click parameters and add a new point like I just did there, and then kind of move it like this. So, so I'll keep it like that, okay? And there's all sorts of possibilities you can mess around with here, okay? Now, the way that we're gonna make this easy base is we are going to add a lot of more things on the same knob and just automate it. So, what I'm gonna do that is go over to here, I'm gonna go to add mapping, okay? And then I'm gonna choose my other mapping. For some reason, my learn button isn't working, but yours should. If I hit learn there, it should stay red when I click it, and then I should be able to highlight something else right here, but it's not working for me, it should for you. So I'll just go the old fashioned way, I'll click here, go to EFM1, and I want to do the modulation wave. So if I go here, modulator wave, that should be what I wanna modulate, perfect. So that's right here. So when I go to the, click on the modulation wave, my range minimum is zero once again, my maximum is nine. So I'm gonna move that up. Okay, I, I want it to be probably maybe around six. So if I go here, let's go down to six. So I'll move this around. If you notice, I go to the my zero percent and I'm at six here and I, I like my max at nine. So when I go like this, now let's hear our sound. So it's giving me some cool noises. I'm gonna open this again, just see what my curve is. And sometimes the default curve is kind of strange. So I'm just gonna hit reset here. And now it's gonna get me back to normal. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it glitches and that's fine. Um, but for this one, I am gonna change my curve slightly. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it up here. So it's kind of linear, but a little bit uh, more curved. So. <laughs> So that's the sound I'm getting there. All right, so now I'm gonna add an, a few more. So let's do three more, and I'll be quicker with these ones. I'm gonna change the 
harmonic, this harmonic right here, the carrier har harmonic. So when I go over to my new mapping, I'll click that, unmapped, and then I'll go to EFM1, and I need to find carrier harmonic, okay? And then I'm fine with this being 0 to 36, but I'm gonna open this, and for some reason it is weird, so I'm gonna reset it, and then I'm going to just make this the default curve like this, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. Here's what that sounds like. All right, and then next thing I'm gonna do is add another mapping. And what I wanna do is the FM depth right here. So I'm gonna click here, and then here I'm gonna click modulator FM amount for the envelope right there. Let's see if that does the right thing. Yep, it does, I wanted to move this knob. So I'm gonna change this from negative to just zero. Actually, I'm gonna put it at 0 0.2, and I'll leave this at 100. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna reset this, and I will have the curve like this, but I'm gonna make it like that. So here's what that sounds like. All right, and then last one, I'm going to go to add mapping. I wanna adjust the stereo detune, because right now my sound is mono, and I want my sound to be more stereo. So I'm gonna go right here, EFM1, and then I'm going to click on Carrier Stereo Detune, and watch what happens. And right now it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it is being controlled. If I hit open, I'm sure this is gonna be weird. Yeah, it's all the way down here, so that's why nothing was happening. So I'll just go to reset. Now let's try it. All right, I'm gonna move this up to, let's say 20, 27, perfect. So here's what happens with all of these things being controlled by this. So I'm getting some harsh sounds, but the best part about this is I can control this with some automation. So I'm gonna get out of smart controls now, and I'll get out of that. So I'm gonna solo this, I'm gonna make a new region, and I'm gonna make a note. So let's say that I want my note to be F. So I'll make this the full measure. And then when I automate this, Instead of having to automate all those things individually, what I can do is just go here. I hit A to get into automation, by the way. I click on here to choose what I want to automate, and I'm gonna go right to smart controls, and then carrier FM intensity. That was the first setting that we attached to that smart control knob, so that's what it's called. You could rename that if you want. But anyway, I'm gonna click this, and then I'm at 70% right now, but let's say I start at 39, maybe go up to 60, and then come back down. Let's see what this sounds like. All right, let's try to get something more aggressive. I'm gonna start up a little higher, and see how I'm just experimenting to find a sound. And then what I would do normally is I would right click on this, and then go to bounce in place. And I just had all those settings naturally. So I'm gonna mute this, I'm gonna turn this down, because I think I had it normalized, and then click here. So then, right here, what I would do is I could chop this up. Let's say I wanted to make it into all qu quarter notes. I'm gonna do the scissors tool. You could just do this individually, but I'm gonna hit, do the scissors tool. I'm gonna hit command, because this is my command tool. And then if I, if I hit alt, then I can cut all of them at the quarter note. And then, I'll keep this soloed, sorry. And if I highlight these, I will go like this. And then what I like to do often is turn this, my fade in, up a little bit. So let's do like 40 and 40 or something like that. And then I'm gonna try to turn these into speed ups and slowdowns. So let's hear what this sounds like. 
So we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, so that was a lower note. Now, what I often do is I make probably four or five of these just to start and see. If I was gonna spend more time on a track, I would spend a lot more time just finding the exact right bases. But the point of this is to show you that once you have this instrument, you can save it and then make tiny tweaks while you are producing your track. So anyway, I'm gonna duplicate this instrument right here. And then I'm gonna drag this and copy the automation. And then I'm gonna change the note to something higher. So let's maybe, if we have a low note, I'm gonna go up. So I went up two octaves. And let's just see what the automation is here. So I'm gonna mute these other two tracks. So that's kind of cool, but I'm gonna to try to adjust it a little bit. Let's see what this sounds like. Maybe I'll put this back. We'll have something like this. And I am going to go back into this synth and slightly adjust. Maybe I'll turn this attack up a bit. And notice, once again, I'm just tweaking. All right, so I'm going to bounce that in place, whatever it is. Once again, you can spend more time if you want. And then I'll do the same trick that I did with these files. Make them a little shorter. Do the speed up and slow down. And I'll put these all on the same track. And here are some of our bass noises. I have eight little things here. Now, for the track that I made in the intro of this video, I put a lot of effects on this. I mixed and matched some things. And then what I did is I'll show you up here, get out of automation, and zoom out, unmute all this stuff. Well, I'll mute this track. Uh, what I did is I, I just found some presets, so I found this one. I spent maybe a minute looking for this. It sounds like this. And then I layered that with another preset, this. And here I go. I put some sub underneath. And if you don't know how to make a sub bass, I have a tutorial uh, in my Logic Pro playlist on my YouTube channel. And then this is what I came up with, just the bass part alone. And th this is just kind of like a mix and match of all other things of an instrument I made just like this. Now you can hear some effects on here and I will put this up so you can see it. So all I did is I put some EQ, I cut off my lows and then my highs so my hi-hats and cymbals could get through. And then I had a fat effects, I just went to the Bright Dirt plugin and then adjusted the mix to 62.7% and that's it. And then I added a ring shifter, whatever the default thing was and I put that on 0.11. Then I added a ton of Bit Crusher. If you watch any of my Logic Pro tutorials, you know I love using Bit Crusher as both a soft clipper and a distortion. And then I just added some echo and some reverb, not a ton. And here's what we got. So the last thing I would recommend that you do is take one of these instruments that you made which is this one, and save it as a preset. So to do that, I would go to settings and then save channel strip as, save channel strip setting as, and then call it whatever you want. So I'll call this smart control heavy bass synth. Okay, so now the next time that you load up a project, instead of having to do that again, if you like the sound that you made, you can just pull that up and then start messing with automations. So then you can make some really quick bases to get your ideas flowing and expedite your work process. So anyway, that's how to make a heavy bass using smart controls. Um, you can do a lot more with the smart controls. I only automated the synth, but you can add effects that you wanna automate. You can automate basically anything, um, and the possibilities are really endless. Anyway, if you like this video or if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you wanna see more content like this and see my other DJ videos, music production videos, or original music, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.